Hello again, this is Damien from Fixing PC and I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers who have been with me thus far. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for taking in the content and I hope it has been helpful to everyone subscribe and even to those who haven't subscribed as yet. But if you find my content interesting, don't forget subscribe, like the video hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos come out and don't forget to leave a comment and any video that you would like to see me do now today's topic is going to be double port forwarding right it's a topic that confuses some so we're going to try to shed some light on it today now an instance where you'd want to use this would be if you have a surveillance system or a web server that's behind uh, a firewall or another router in case you know you have your stuff uh, segmented in a, in a particular way whereas you just are pretty much getting a connection from another router somebody else's router that you probably have access to yes or they would grant you access to that because you need access to both the main router that brings in the internet and the router that you're going to configure for your segment of the network so as we can see in this diagram the internet comes in to uh, well my setup anyway the internet comes in to the isp router and well we have flow you no longer have blink from like the last dl1 video but anyhow yeah so the the internet comes in via coax to flow right it goes to this box this is the isp providers router modem switch combination router and then I have an Ethernet cable coming out of the flow router going to ETH0 on the edge router X and then I have ETH1 on the edge router X going out to a switch and on that switch I have several devices one of which is my laptop alright so the network of the flows internal network is 192.168.0.1 uh side at 24 and the external ip of the edge router x is 192.168.0.154 it's dhcp just for this demonstration you can set it to a uh, i would advise you set it to a static ip so that if the ip address changes and you made these forwarding uh, rules that point to a particular ip address the rule doesn't break so you have you would want to have this static but for today and just for this demonstration I'm leaving it DHCP and the internal IP addresses of the under the edge router X that will be given to my um, laptop is 192.168.1.1 side of 24 and of course the laptop will get an IP address within this scope right so let's get right into the configuration let's minimize this and bring up the edge router x now you know how to log into the edge router x you put in the https and the ip address and you enter your credentials and you you, you log in having done so you you would see now that i'm at the dashboard so here we have it zero with an IP address as I uh, you saw in the diagram 192.168.0.154 side of 24 and it's connected and this is where my laptop is connected to via this network 192.168.1.1 so first thing you're gonna do we're gonna um, forward port 3389 so to do this in the edge router to, to forward you have to go to firewall NAT once here you want to make sure that you're on the port forwarding tab right and you want to make sure that here pin NAT is enabled and your one interface is set to where your internet is going to be coming in so in our case 
is going to be eat zero this port right here eat zero and we see one interface eat zero so we're going to make sure it's eat zero you see there's other, eat, uh, other interfaces here but we're going to get eat zero and the LAN interface that you're going to forward to is I have two LAN 2 going here so it's ETH1 which is a separate network from ETH2, 3 and 4 so ETH1 goes to a switch it expands ETH2, 3 and 4 can each go to individual switches but that's within the edge router X so we go here LAN interface 1 so now we make sure we have our one interface and our LAN interface so it's going to come in through the one interface ETH0 and go into the LAN interface ETH1 and this is where you're going to have the forwarding going on so now we add the rule to add the rule you're going to have to give the port number right right now there's a reason I'm doing this on the edge router X first is just to show you that once I've done it here it's not going to you know be seen on the internet so because we have an internet connection here so we're going to forward that TCP the address we're going to forward to however um, right, let me just get the IP address of the laptop. And there we have 192.168.1.38. So we're going to forward to address 192.168.1.38. Forward to port 3389. Description. Just put RDP and now we'll apply that rule. Now you see the say configuration has been applied successfully. So let's go to can you see me dot org and test and see if you can see to the tree nine from outside of our in outside of our network and we have an error so you see we could not see we got an error right now so we'll get back to this so now that we have successfully forwarded the port on the edge router x now we're going to use this IP address here right 192.168.0.154 but we're going to do that on the ISP router which is located at 192 dot one six eight dot zero dot one and here we get the uh the router let's log into it now so wait for the pages to load up and then we just go across to the firewall page virtual servers and here is where we're gonna add our port our port for the room so I'll name this one RDP here inbound port 3389 to match the other one on the other side 389 we're gonna keep TCP now the IP address we're gonna use remember we're gonna use 192.168.0.154 and the reason we're going to use that is remember we're forwarding a port from the internet so when that port number comes to the ISP router it's going to be like okay I have a request for port 3389 it's going to look to see if it has a rule as to where to send this information that that needs to go to the IP address for port 3389 it's going to find an IP address and say alright I'm going to send that information there the IP address it's going to find is the external IP address here so it's going to send to the 389 through the router to the other router to this IP address here and then this router is going to say alright we have a request for 3389 where do I send that to it's going to look inside and see where inside it's going to send it to and it's going to find oh yeah, this is a, this, any information coming here needs to get forwarded to 1.38 so it's going to send it out through LAN 1 because that's where the forwarding rule is for, that's where it's found. And it's going to go all the way 
to here and that's how it's going to get from the internet to this device now this could be your camera system this could be a web server that's how the outside world is going to get through two routers you know two layers of network to get to you buried at the bottom all right so let's complete the uh the forwarding process three three eight nine so three three eight nine now you want to make sure the numbers match however they don't necessarily have to match but they need to match where it's important for it to match in other words the outbound port could be a different number right and you could have a different number set on the inbound port correct but the only thing with that is whatever port you set to the outside if you're using remotely you're gonna have to use that port number and not the default port number that you know would be on the device now the reason for that is you can come in on a different port number but on the local port on the other side you're gonna go out through the port number you need to go out to make sense if it doesn't leave a comment all right so now that we have this um, configuration set up we're gonna hit add virtual server And there we have it. Virtual server has been added. See the rule here, port number, and where it's going to, and it's there. So let's go back now and check to see if our port is now open. Check port, and there you go. The port is now open. So now we have a port that's forwarded from the internet through your ISP router to your router through your router to your device so if you have any further questions on double port forwarding and how it's done you can leave a comment in the comment section or if you need advice and help on how to set this up for yourself you can always contact me my contact information is in the description and this has been Damien from Fiction PC hoping that this has helped someone in some way so here's to wishing you a good day. Thank you for tuning in.